Back of the Net is brought to you by the Irish Embassy Pub and Coldwell Banker Heritage House Realtors, your Durango local area real estate experts, locally owned, nationally known. Welcome to the Back of the Net with me, Jordan Alexander, here in the Irish Embassy Pub, the home of Durango Soccer. Now this week, Fort Lewis women's team lost two games, Fort Lewis men's team won two games. We're also going to have John Mahoney in the show to talk about his bird's eye view in the commentary box. But without further ado, let's go to the highlights from Fort Lewis men's games and see how they did. Fort Lewis versus Colorado Mines down in Golden, Colorado. Both teams searching for a higher playoff seeding in the Armac tournament. Aaron Claw here going down the wing. Hasn't got many options in the box, but he's got Cesar Castillo to his right. Makes an overlapping run, gives Castillo space. Takes his man on, gives himself a chance to shoot. Good strike, bomb corner. Oh, goalkeeper gets there first. Good play by four of us. Yanis Becker shrugs off the defender there. Plays it to Luke Lawrence, lets it across himself. Ball comes out to Castillo again. Castillo strikes from distance, curves in. Nope, doesn't get there. Mines cross from the free kick, plays it out. Mike Brandt looks like cleared it out. Good strike! Oh, nearly in the top corner there. And this looks like Alberto capped upon. Oh! Shots are flying in this game. Castillo there gets around his man again. Still no one in the box. Takes it all on his own. Good save by the goalkeeper. Where's the ball? Right there, it's a big scramble now. Defenders trying to get out. Shot comes in. Saving the keeper. Luke Lawrence into the bottom corner. 1 0 Fort Lewis. Mines on the offensive. Got an overlap there. It's got to be offside, hasn't it? Now the refs just play on. He's looking for the players in the box. He's got numbers. Finds his man. Tries to get round him. Ah, well, with that tackle, that's definitely going to be a penalty. Yes, the referee's given it. Mines player steps up for the penalty. Ryan Shaw in goal. He goes the right way, but just doesn't quite get there. That's a shame. He's frustrated. 1 1. Into sudden death overtime we go. Yanis into. Luke Lawrence back to Zach Lawrence. Plays it into Luke Lawrence again on the left foot. Half volley, that's a goal. Fort Lewis, 2-1 with a victory. Fort Lewis versus Colorado Christian here in Durango at Dirks Field. Bit of a blustery and rainy day. Colorado Christian with only two wins in the entire season. Fort Lewis looking to capitalize on that. Ball's out there wide on the left wing. Numbers in the box, ball comes in. Oh, right in front of goal. It's good save by the goalkeeper. Looks like he got a hand there. Very important save. Christian with the free kick from distance. He's gone for goal. Crossbow. And the ball is still alive. Fort Lewis need to watch out. They need to clear their lines. Get this ball out of here. Looks like it's still in play. Straight back to Christian again. Ball comes over the top there. And Ryan Shaw was out to clear his lines. Ball comes on the edge of the box there. Looks like it's going. That's a great ball into the box. Trevor Gibbons at the back post. Oh, goalkeeper comes out. Claims that ball for himself. Into overtime for the second game in a row. Ball comes into the box. Yanis Becker with a little touch into the goal. It's that simple. One touch. Let's have another look at that. Great ball into the box. All he does is poke it home. Fort Lewis win. 1-0. Welcome back. Those are the highlights from the Fort Lewis two games this weekend for the men's side. Ogie Kenby. Jordan, thanks for having me as always. Of course. How are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. So, a uh, two wins this weekend. Yeah, two wins. We played uh, up in Golden, Colorado against mm -hmm. Mines on Friday night. Um, we went 1-0 up. Uh, they were able to equalize from a penalty and then uh, went into overtime. And I think about f three or four minutes into the overtime, uh, Luke Lawrence came up with a winner. So. And he had the first goal as well, didn't he? He did, yeah. He had two, and then he had the game winner against Metro in overtime the week previous. Um, and so, and both Lawrence brothers, Zach had the assist against Mines and then uh, an assist yesterday against Christian. So both of them are uh, looking quite sharp right now. So it's good having the, the brothers in there, especially after you've had Casey Dean and Corey Dean. Yeah. It's a, it's well, a theme we're going to keep seeing. Well, I think Fort Lewis, you've had the Fredericks brothers. Mm -hmm. um, now you've got the Dean brothers and now you've got the Lawrence brothers. So yeah. it's obviously something that, you know, happens. It's great. I mean, the, the two the two guys played at high school together, played yeah. at um, La Cueva High School and, and won state championships down there. And uh, it's great to have them on the same team now. Mm -hmm. so. And how was the atmosphere on the, the night game? I know night games are what soccer players live for. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it was a little bit cold. Yeah. It was good for the players because they were running around a little bit cold for the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and obviously we didn't get a chance to uh, avail of Halloween and, and dress up, but yeah. we'll uh, 
prefer the win on a Friday night at Halloween. So yeah, definitely. We'll have to get the picture of that for the for the show. Well, the I guys, I, the guys actually, yeah, they had a little Halloween costume on the Thursday night when we went to our team dinner. So uh, I think there was a couple of good costumes in there. If you can find some pictures. Any insights? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think uh, there was a couple of impersonations of of players within the group. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of uh, Mario and Luigi brothers. I saw that. Uh, yeah, Marcel. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, yeah, they went all out. So it was, a, it was a good little bit of fun on the Thursday night before the, the team uh, yeah. during the team dinner before we got ready for the, the game Friday. Yeah, then a quick turnaround, driving back Saturday morning. Yeah, really tough. Um, it's hard because we this is the fourth week we've been on the road, mm -hmm. and uh, it just takes a lot out of you. It, you know, even just on that bus alone, yeah. uh, you know, it makes it a seven-hour journey. So it was tough. We had a tough turnaround. And I think you could see that in how the game went on Sunday. Mm -hmm. It was. Although we created a lot of chances, I think there wasn't as much energy as we would have liked. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a tough turnaround all the time when you're home and away in the same yeah. weekend. So. so in the Sunday's game, there was 30-odd shots on goal? 30 shots, yeah. Um, the 30th being the game winner yeah. in overtime. Uh, I think it's 27 seconds or something like that mm -hmm. in. Again, Zach uh, with an assist for Yanis to score. Mm -hmm. um, and it was hard. The, the field as well being so heavy with all the rain that we had gotten. I know everybody's going to hate me for saying this, but we need the snow to stay away for yeah. a couple more days, mm -hmm. at least in town anyway. Um, you can hammer purgatory, but just leave us leave alone us for alone. a minute. Yeah. Um, but no, the field was heavy. It was hard on the guy's legs, and, and Christian did a good job of defending. And we created a lot of chances, and you know, it, it could have been a, a cricket score at times. Yeah. But again, it's just it's about getting a little bit of luck in front of goal, which we got when Yana scored. So, yeah. so that closes out the regular season now. Where does that Yes, occur? regular season. So we finished, uh, which is... Unique to the Armark, it's never happened before. Uh, there's a three-way tie for second. Mm -hmm. So we have ourselves, uh, Regis, and Mind. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's a great comeback when you think a couple of weeks ago, it was all doom and gloom. I think we were in sixth, and, and everybody was kind of probably wondering what was going to happen. But um, great reaction from the guys. Yeah. Um, they've gone and, and put themselves uh, uh, into second, which is huge. Um, and also, uh, you know, they're only one result away from being that, you know, second on their own so mm -hmm. there was it's that tight right now yeah. um and so that's great for us we've been seated for the armac tournament which we found out uh, yesterday after our game so we are seated fourth we'll play uh, colorado springs yep. um, wednesday. this week on wednesday yeah. yeah and then uh the winner of that game which will hopefully be fort lewis will go on and play mesa who are the number one seed up yeah. in grand junction on the friday so hopefully next time we see you next week well i'm hoping we'll yeah tomorrow will be over hopefully we've gotten through friday and, and win on sunday and i'll be here with a trophy and hopefully one of the couple of players to come and talk about it excellent yeah let's have more than one player let's bring, why not bring the whole team yeah why not we can try and squeeze them all in here maybe we can get them in their halloween costumes that'd be awesome <laughs> thanks for joining us yeah no problem thanks jordan after this more back of the day. Your home, it's made of wood and nails, doors and windows, but it's more than that. Your home is you. It's who you are, where you're from. It's what you long for whenever you're away. And it's the only place in the world where you know one thing for certain, your home. Welcome to the Irish Embassy Pub Durango. We import the majority of our products straight from the Emerald Isle, and let's get it right. You want your Guinness directly imported from Dublin. You want it stored at precisely the right temperature. And you want the pour to be a matter of taste and science. You want to pull with the patience and precision that it deserves. And if that wasn't authentic enough, you want to enjoy it in the pub where the shelves are stocked with 24 different kinds of Irish whiskey. Yes, you want the true Irish experience. Come visit us at the Irish Embassy Pub Durango. Back of the Net is brought to you by the Irish Embassy Pub and Coldwell Banker Heritage House Realtors, your Durango local area real estate experts, locally owned. Welcome back to the Back of the Net. Now this week I'm lucky to be joined by the voice of Durango soccer, John Mahoney. How are you doing? Fine. Great Jordan, to see how are you? you? So you're the person who's up in the sky at the boxes for the home game doing the commentary on the radio. You have a perfect view of the field. Talk us through this week's games. We had the girls on Friday and then the guys on Sunday. Well, that was a disappointing game for mm -hmm. the girls on yep. Friday because uh, they were fighting for a little higher ranking in the Armac tournament, thinking they would win against a team that hadn't won a game in, uh, in the league. Yep. And we ended up losing 1-0 to Mesa. Yeah, so yeah Mesa, they, they hadn't been doing well at all. And 
I mean, if they keep plugging away, especially near the end of the season, they are going to get their get their points, and that's what they get. They don't make the playoffs as the girl. I think the girls go through in the, the fifth ranking for the playoffs, um, yeah. and then the guys they go through is the fourth ranking. And that game on Sunday was against Christian. How was that for you up there? Well, as you said, we have a wonderful view, yeah. and we were just so excited watching the game mm -hmm. because we were looking forward to a win against, uh, again, uh, a, a weaker team. Um, and for the first half an hour or so, um, Fort Lewis looked like the 2005 team, you know, that won the championship. They were just passing beautifully. They had a series of 30 and 40 um, passes in a row, but they just couldn't score. Couldn't I think we had 28 shots to their eight. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that's so tough when, when you keep possession for so long and you get to the final third and you can't convert it into a goal. And especially as against Christian teams that before, in the past, Fort Lewis have turned over 12 nils, sure. 13 nils. That must be frustrating. But for you, what kind of, which players this season have really stood out for you as players that have just had good seasons for Fort Lewis? Well, on the women's side, uh, of course, Shea Haycock mm -hmm. had a fabulous season at right fullback. Yeah. Uh, I think um, Carolyn Archer in the midfield mm -hmm. played lots and lots of minutes and was a real great workhorse. And, uh, of course, Caitlin Espinosa in goal had lots and lots of shutouts. Yeah. Uh, fabulous. Um, on the men's side, well, there's a lot to pick from. Um, obviously, the star of the team is Yanis Becker. Mm. He, uh, he seems to control the whole game from midfield. He's very, very energetic, energetic and athletic. Yeah. And, of course, he's the top goal scorer. Um, I think Mike Brandt has had an incredible season. Solid Played back. lots and lots of minutes, hardly yeah. ever makes a mistake. I think Aaron Claw on the other side at right fullbacks had a fabulous season. Yeah. Um, you can't and, forget Cesar Castillo on the I wing. Was, I was going to mention Crowd favourite. Yes, he's yeah. a crowd favourite. He's a beautiful uh, dribbler of the ball. Mm -hmm. And it's always exciting when he comes on. Yeah, and it's a shame that this was his senior year, really, to not see him, see the team progress a bit more through his play. It would be great if we could clone him and have him on the other wing as well. <laughs> <laughs> but Zach Lawrence has done a really good job out there as well. Both wings just run at, run at players, run at defenders, and kind of make their life hell for them. It's a little unfair to pick out some players because yeah. I feel the Lawrence brothers are mm -hmm. fabulous. Um, I think Elliot Prost has had a terrific yep. uh, season. Um, so lots and lots of, I almost hate to leave someone out, yeah. but they're the standout players for me. Of course. And you'll be around commentating next year? Well, we hope so. We you hope never so. quite know, but uh, I'd love to be on the air again and follow yeah. the team, uh, certainly with the women's team, with starting with five and six freshmen. It'll yeah. be exciting to watch them next year. Definitely. Excellent. Well, hopefully I can join, up, join you up there. I'm itching to get up there and get on the air with you. <laughs> Thanks for coming in today, John. <laughs> well, that's the sound of the full-time whistle, which means, unfortunately, that's the end of another show. Now, with all the seasons wrapping up for DYSA, the high school, and Fort Lewis, we haven't got many shows left. So remember to send your submissions in to ideas at durangotv.com. That's ideas at durangotv.com. I want to see all of your skills, all your juggling, and all of your goals. Now that wraps up for another show. I'm Jordan Alexander. And remember, next time you're around the edge of the goal, this season or next season, don't just tap it in, smash it right in the back of the net. See you next time. Back of the Net is brought to you by the Irish Embassy Pub and Coldwell Banker Heritage House Realtors, your Durango local area real estate experts, locally owned, nationally known.